Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, so guys, uh, uh, so we can find the review sheet on Blackboard. It's on the Blackboard, of course. Um, so first, is there any uh, is there any request, any specific question about the review the review sheet or the, the homeworks? I mean, do you want me to start with any specific problem, or I can probably just you know otherwise I can just start start with the problem first problem. But the thing is, I'm not sure if I mean we have uh, two, two hours forty five minutes, right? Uh, can but I, mean, I, mean, I, I can try to do my best to cover all the problems, but I'm not sure if the time is enough. But Yes. So, if you have any specific request, uh, oh, sir. Yes. Can we do the last part where you say to graph the function? The, so the problem number se seven. Uh, maybe yeah. The last one where you said uh, to graph, graph the function, function continuous. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sure. Okay. I can do that. Juanita, you're saying. Let me see. Uh, problem number three. Okay. Perfect. So. Uh, so okay, so let me, uh, okay. I'm gonna do number uh, number seven first. It's a very short uh, problem, and then we can, we uh, we can do the number three, and then um, yeah, and then uh, I guess uh, we, we get, I'm gonna try to finish the rest of the problems uh, unless there is any any request. So yeah, so um, let's start with the uh, problem seven. So this is this is a review. All right, so let me start with problem number seven. Oh, professor, and I'm sorry, yes. it's not problem three. Uh -huh. It's problem five. Five, okay, okay, no, no problem, no problem. Um, okay, so let me first do the seven and then I'm gonna do the five, right? Uh, so for problem seven, uh, it says a graph function that is continuous at x equal to one, but not differentiable at x equal to one. All right. So, um, um, you know, so this is, uh, I mean, the, the standard example of a function, which Excuse is me, not, professor. Which, yes. So I'm going to log out of my phone and go on my tablet. Okay. Okay. Sure. No problem. Sure. No problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, guys uh, a function which is continuous but not differentiable so let me just remind you when a function fails uh, to be uh, differentiable um, so if you have for example uh, a corner or a cusp uh, in the graph then the function is uh, actually uh, not differentiable at that point so uh, so the idea is the following let me just explain in a few words the idea and then I will answer the question. So, so what I'm saying is, so in general, if you have, for example, so the question is when, uh, when a function okay, so when uh, does a function fail uh, fail to be uh, uh, differentiable. All right. Well, so uh, if if you have if you have a corner, uh, so if the graph if the graph looks like you know if you have like a corner like this here, okay, or a cusp like this. So this is a cusp, all right? Then uh, in this case, the function is not differentiable. Then the function is not differentiable. Then f is not differentiable. Well, the reason is, again, the reason is the, you know, the slope uh, differentiability or derivative is about the slope of the tangent line. So you see here from the left, here's your slope. It's uh, you know, here it's going up, so the slope is positive, and here it's going down, so the slope is negative. So at the at the corner, um, you know, uh, from from the left, your derivative is supposed to be positive because it's going up, and uh, you know, from the right, it's going down, so the slope is negative, so the derivative is negative, right? So which means that the derivative from the left is different from the derivative from the right. So that's why this function is not differentiable at the corner. So then if you're not, 
find the function, which is continuous at x equal to one, but not differentiable. So then an example would be, um, so you can graph a function with a, a corner or a cusp at, so the answer to the question, so if you wanna answer the question then, so to answer the question, you can just, uh, you can just graph a function with a corner or a cusp. All right, so here's, let's say this is one, this is a one here, this is two, et cetera. Then all you have to do is you can graph a function, let's say, this, this, let's take this point here and have a corner at that point. All right. So this function f of x here, this is this function is this function is uh, of course it's continuous at this uh, point at x equal to one, right here. This function is continuous because you know at x equal to one, at this point here, I mean there is no jump or a hole at x equal to one, right? So it's a continuous graph. So uh, at one. So this function f is continuous at x equal to one, but it's not, of course, it's not differentiable because we have a corner at x equal to one. So this, this f of x is um, uh, continuous at x equal to one. Again, guys, so what you need to understand is that when you say it's the, the function is continuous, at x equal, equal to one, it means that the graph is continuous. There is no interruption. I mean, there is no hole or jump at x equal to one, right? It's a continuous graph. It doesn't, it doesn't stop at x equal to one or there's no jump at x equal to one, right? So it's continuous at x equal to one. But the thing is, um, because we have this corner at x equal to one, right? This is a, our corner here, right? Then f, but f is not differentiable. F is not differentiable. And again, why it's not differentiable, it's because when you think of differentiability, so you need to think about the derivative, which is which is supposed to represent the slope. And you can see here again, you know, the slope from the right from the left here, it's positive because it's going up. However, the slope on the right side here, it's, it's negative because you know, the function is going down. So then f is not differentiable, of course, at the corner, right? Uh, which, which, uh, which corresponds to x equal to one, right? So that would be an example of a graph uh, which is continuous but not differentiable at x equal to one. And instead of a corner, of course, you can have a cusp or you know, it's, uh, it's up to you guys, right? Professor, so that's for yes. Mm -hmm. So we can do uh, other way around, like uh, yeah, you can uh, reverse. Yeah, yeah you can. To, mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, when you go to um, one, one minus, uh, like uh, let's say it's a uh, negative, and when it goes to one, one plus is uh, positive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, sure. you can you can do that too. Yeah, sure. It's up to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, welcome, Savannah. Sure. Um, okay. So that's for number seven. So yeah, um, not differentiable. A very good example. Again, that's the that was an example of the absolute value of x. So remember, f of x equals to absolute value of x was this function absolute value of x. Uh, remember guys, we said it's not differentiable at, uh, it's continuous, but not differentiable at X equal to zero because at X equal to zero, we had, you know, a corner, right? Um, so yeah. Okay, so I guess, uh, if, is there any other question guys about problem number seven? Again, uh, a very good example of a function which is continuous but not differentiable would be a graph with a corner or a cusp, okay? Um, so Juanita, you said uh, problem number five, right? If I remember, uh, you said, the, yeah, problem number five, I think, yes. Yeah. Okay, so, mm -hmm. okay, so problem number five. With 
this is from the review sheet, of course. Um, find the equation of the tangent line to the function one uh, f of x equals to one over x plus two at x equal to negative one. So my f of x is uh, one over x plus two. All right. And you want to find the equation of the tangent line. Uh, so find the equation of the tangent line at x equal to negative one. All right. So uh, to find the equation of the tangent line, there are two main steps. First step. Um, first, uh, well, first, let me just remind you um, uh, the, the, the general equation or the formula of the, uh, of the tangent line, the equation of the tangent line. Um, so uh, so the, 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 the equation of the tangent line tangent line to f of x tangent line to f of x at x equal to a. So the general equation is the following. So we have y equals to uh, m times x minus a, right? Plus f of a, right? Where m, so the m is supposed to be actually f prime of a, All right? So that's the general, equation of the tangent line uh, to function f at x equal to a. So in our problem, uh, so my function f is one over x plus two and my a, a would be, a would be of course, x is negative one. Um, here you see x is equal to negative one. So my a is uh, negative one, right? Now, um, so as I said, uh, there are two main steps to find this equation. The well, first step would be to find this number m, and that will be like uh, the most important step. So step one, so we have to find m. So find m, okay, which is f prime of a, and we said a is negative one, right? Um, a is negative one. So that's f prime of negative one. Uh, and then, well, well, probably I should write the, the formula and the general, the formula for m. Um, so m is supposed to be f prime of a. So this is the definition. So it's a limit, you know, h go to zero, f prime, f, sorry, f of x, f of a plus h. So this is f of a plus h minus f of a over h. Okay, so that's the definition of f prime of a, which is, uh, which is m. So let's compute this m. Um, so my m would be a limit, h going to zero, f of a, we said, um, you know, a, we said that's negative one. So a is negative one. So we're gonna have f of a plus h, so that'll be negative one plus h minus f of a, so f of negative one over h, All right? So in this formula, we need to find uh, two things. Uh, first, we need to find f of uh, negative one plus h, right? This f of negative one plus h, and then we need to find f of, uh, compute f of, ne f of negative one, and then compute the limit, right? So first, uh, what's f of negative one plus h? Well, f of x is one over x plus two, okay? So you wanna compute f of negative one plus h. So you have to substitute x by a negative one plus h, right? So here's this x here. Okay, so this x here, you have to substitute x by negative one plus h. So we're gonna have one over, so instead of x, we're gonna have negative one plus h. So here's my negative one plus h, 
all right? And then there's a plus two. Right? So this is here plus two. So that would be one over, so negative one plus two, that would be positive one. So that's positive one plus H, all right? Now, uh, so that's for F of negative one plus H. Uh, please guys, uh, feel free to interrupt me and ask questions if you have any, all right? Um, now, and that's for f of negative one plus h, we need f of negative one. Uh, so the second thing here, we need f of negative one, right? We are, we are done with this. Now we, uh, we have to find this f of negative one. So f of negative one, it's just one over, uh, so we have to plug negative one into the function f, so it's one over negative one plus two, right? So that would be one over one, and that would be positive one, right? Okay, now I can compute my M, right? So my M would be uh, limit H going to zero, F of negative one plus H, F of negative one plus H, we said it's one over one plus H, right? And then there's this minus. So here's my minus. Right? And then f of negative one, it's positive one. So it's minus one, right? And the whole thing, of course, over h, right? So, um, of course, if you just uh, replace h by, uh, by, uh, by zero here, you're gonna have uh, zero over zero, all right? So that would be indeterminate form. So we have to simplify this expression first. So we have to, compute the top. So that's limit h going to zero. So here in the top, I have, uh, you know, subtraction of fractions. Uh, so I need to get the common denominator, like, uh, so first I need to make this one look like a, a fraction. So I'm gonna divide by one, right? And then I'm gonna multiply by one plus h here and one plus h the top and in the bottom, right? To get the common denominator. So that will be one over one plus H minus one plus H over one plus H. The whole thing over H. Okay, now uh, I can, so now I can subtract um, because I have the common denominator. So this is my M limit h going to zero. So I have in the top, I have one minus. So here, this one plus h comes with parentheses. So we have we need parentheses one plus h over the common denominator, which is one plus h, All right? And then the whole thing, of course, divided by h. Don't, don't forget to divide by h, All right? So, so this is m limit h going to zero. So it's one minus, and then you distribute the sign. So it's minus one, and then minus plus h, that would be minus h, right? Divided by one plus h, and then the whole thing again over h. Now we have one minus one, so it cancel out. So this is one minus one, right? So it's just minus h over one plus h, the whole thing divided by h, so this is division of fractions. In the top, I have this minus h over one plus h. In the denominator, I have h, but uh, of course, uh, if you, you can make this h look like a fraction by dividing by one here, okay? So now uh, you, you're gonna divide two fractions. So you have to flip the denominator, All right? So then your m, so then your M would be limit H going to zero. So we have minus H over one plus H and then times, and then I flip the H over one. So if you flip, flip H over one, it would be one over H. Okay. And uh, so then of course this is a multiplication. So you can, uh, well, you can multiply first. So let's multiply first. Um, so uh, M would be limit H going to zero. So in the top, 
if you multiply straight across, so minus h times one, it's minus h. And denominator, one plus h times h. All right? So there's an h on the top, there's an h in the denominator, they cancel out. So this is here to cancel out. Right. So if you cancel out the h in the top, uh, you are left with, uh, this is h, this is supposed to be h uh, times one. Right. So when you cancel out the h, you are left with one. So this is actually, so your m is a limit, h going to zero, it's negative one in the top, right? This is because I have a minus here and one. So it's negative one over one plus h. All right, so now I am done with simplification. Now I can replace my h by zero. So now h is zero. So that would be negative one over one plus zero. So that's negative one over one. So it's gonna be negative one. So the answer is negative one. So your m in the, in the equation of the tangent line, your m is actually equal to negative one, right? So that's our first step. We got M. Once you, you get M, then you can now write down the equation of the tangent line, All right? So, um, so that will be your step number two. So that's step number two, step number two. So uh, recall, so the equation of the tangent line was, uh, you know, Y equals to M. Uh, times x minus a plus f of a, right? Remember guys, a was uh, negative one. Okay. So then your y is gonna be m, m is negative one, right? Here's my m. So my m is negative one times x x minus a, x minus negative one. So negative one between parentheses, right? Plus f of negative one, right? Uh, well, f of negative one, we said it's positive one, right? f of negative one, uh, we said it's uh, one over x plus two, so a negative one plus two. So that would be one over one. So that would be equal to one, right? So then your equation would be so y, uh, negative one times x. So minus minus, that would be a plus, so x plus one. And plus f of negative one, f of negative one, we said a positive one, okay? Right? So this is plus one here, All right? So your y is negative one times x, that's negative x. Negative one times the positive one, it will be negative one. And then there's a plus one. Right, distribute the sign and there is a plus one. So now minus one or minus one plus one, of course that would be zero. So then the answer, the answer would be y equals two minus x. That's the equation of the tangent line to the function f uh, at x equal to negative one. All right, so this is a fine answer here. So this is, is uh, the equation of the tangent line. Uh, to f of x, which is one over x plus two at x equal to negative one. All right. So in other words, guys, I mean, if you wanna visualize this answer, well, I mean, uh, you know, you may understand the computations, but the question now, what's the interpretation of this answer? So what's this y equals to negative, one, and negative x? So if you wanna visualize the answer, uh, so you can graph, you know, if you graph, um, if you graph, so this, of course, this is not, uh, I mean, uh, this is not part of the answer. This is just to clar clarify what I mean by you know, y equals negative x is the equation of the tangent line to f of x, right? So uh, so what I mean is the following. So if you graph f of x, uh, which is one over uh, x plus two, so then let's say the graph of, um, you know, the graph of uh, one over x plus two is, um, 
you know, something which looks like, uh, let's say, um, here. So this is, let's say, negative two. So this is here, this is negative two, this is a negative one, uh, et cetera. This is zero, one, uh, two, all right? Um, yeah, so if you graph, if you try to graph, um, uh, let's say here, um, so here, negative two, uh, zero, negative two, so let's say you have something which looks like this here. All right. All right. So this is, let's say, the graph of one over x plus two, right? But anyway, so what I'm saying is um, uh, the, the um, so that's my function f, then the tangent line, so here's my negative one, this is my x equal to negative one, right? This is, let's say, this is the image of negative one, uh, which is, let's say, positive one. Here, this is supposed to be positive one here, right? Now, so what I'm saying is, if you take the tangent line to the function f at negative one, so if you take the line which passes through this point here, so this line here, this is our tangent line to the function f. So this tangent line, actually the equation of this tangent line is y equals to negative x, okay, at negative one. So you see guys, this is, uh, the slope here, this line here, it's, 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 uh, it's going down, right? And you can see it from the slope. I mean, y equals to negative x. Uh, so the slope is negative one, right? So which means that you know, this line here, it's uh, is going down, right? This is because the slope is negative. So it's going down. Okay. Anyway, so that's, yeah. So that's uh, the answer for uh, number five. Again, you don't have to graph this function f in the, in the test. This is just to explain what I mean by the equation of the tangent line to the function f at the x equal to the negative one, okay? So the final answer is this equation here, the y equals to negative x. Is there any uh, question, guys? No, no, thank you, Professor. Okay, okay, perfect. Um, okay, guys, is there any other request? Um, yes, I have, a, yes, I have a request, Sasha. Yes. Uh, so can you go over number one, but in the first page, the last two on the first page? The last two in the first page. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, and you, and for number three, you you explain how to do that, right, already? Uh, I guess, yes. I mean, because, I can do it again. No, because the because I know how to do those. It's just the ones with the single, like with just an X in it. And then, and then it has x squared. That's the one where I get um, confused at. Confused? Okay, okay, I can do that. Okay, I can go over number three again. No problem, sure. Okay. Uh, so you said first, uh, the last two problems in the first, I mean, the last two limits in the first uh, page, right? Yeah, well, you can do one, because I don't want to take up all the time. So you could just oh, okay. do one. Okay, okay, sure. Um, okay, so this is... Last one. Yeah. Uh, excuse me? You can do the one, the negative four e x plus one. That one. Oh, okay. That one. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. This is problem. So this is problem number one. Um, yeah. I mean, I can do the the, the exponentials, and then probably I don't uh, probably uh, later I, I can come back to the um, uh, the polynomials. Yeah. But let's start with the with the with the exponentials. So okay. We thank have you. Mm -hmm. So we have this uh, limit. So x going to positive infinity of minus four e to the x uh, plus one over uh, minus three e to the x plus two. Okay. So guys, for the exponential, so what you need to know is actually uh, there are two rules that you need to know. So the first rule is that exponential of positive infinity is positive infinity. So um, here, just to remind you, 
remind you the rules here. So first is that exponential, if you have exponential of positive infinity, that's positive infinity, all right? And then exponential of negative infinity, that's zero, okay? And that's because of the graph of the exponential. You know, in the graph of the exponential, uh, the graph of exponential looks like something like this here, okay? So when you're, um, so let's say, uh, when you are at negative infinity, oops. So you are here at negative infinity, right? Your exponential, your graph exponential is very close to zero. And when you are at positive infinity, the graph of exponential is uh, approach positive infinity, all right? So, so that's the two rules that you need to know about the exponential. Uh, now, you wanna compute this limit. Um, so we have, if you, okay, so you have limit x going to positive infinity. So minus four. So if you replace x by positive infinity, so we're gonna have exponential positive infinity plus one over uh, minus uh, three e to the positive infinity uh, plus two. So guys, here in the top, we said, we said exponential of positive infinity is positive infinity, right? I mean, this, so this uh, exponential of positive infinity, this is, um, you know, this is, uh, so this is positive infinity, right? And the exponential positive infinity is also positive infinity, right? Now, uh, because our because of our first rule here, okay. Now positive infinity, of course, times uh, negative four is going to be a negative infinity. Uh, negative infinity plus one, it's still negative infinity. So in the top is going to be infinity, negative infinity, right? Because it's positive infinity multiplied by negative four by a negative number. I mean, positive times and negative is going to be a negative. So in the top, it's a negative infinity. In the, in the bottom, it's also negative infinity. But anyway, so my point is, if you have infinity over infinity, that's uh, n determinant form, okay? So this is, uh, this is, whenever you have an infinity over infinity, that's n determinant form. So this is n determinant form. All right? So what do we do in this case, or the, we, when you have infinity over infinity? Well, the, the idea is to factor, okay? So what we can do is to factor out this uh, exponential. Okay, so the idea, so we have to factor out, factor out the exponential of x, right? So because, uh, but then once you factor out, if you factor out if e to the x, then you can cancel out e to the x and then, uh, then you can compute your limit. So, so what I'm saying is, um, so here's my uh, limit. So I have minus, again, minus four e to the x plus one over negative three e to the x plus two. So I'm gonna pull out e to the x. So I'm gonna pull out this e to the x here and this e to the x here. Of course, so uh, you're gonna have e to the x in the top times, you pull out, e, factor out e to the x, then you're gonna have negative four, right? Because negative four times e to the x would be five, negative four e to the x. And then you see guys here plus one. So if you pull out e to the x, well, then you have to divide by e to the x. So this is plus one over e to the x, right? Because, uh, you know, when you multiply this e to the x times this one over e to the x, the e to the x cancel out, right? So then you are left with one plus one, right? Uh, uh, we're gonna do the same in the, in the bottom, in the denominator. So I'm gonna uh, factor out e to the x times, there is this negative phi, so it's negative phi times e to the x, so it's negative phi, plus two, well, over, because I have to factor out e to the x, so I have to divide here by e to the x, right? Because again, the same idea, uh, e to the x times this two over e to the x, then 
the e to the x will cancel out. So then you are left with two, right? Uh, plus two. All right, so now uh, you factor out your e to the x. So now you can cancel out e to the x. So this e to the, e to the x can cancel out, All right? So my limit now is x going to infinity. I have negative four plus one over e to the x in the top and in the bottom, it's negative three plus two over e to the x. Well, the thing here, guys, is that now if you replace x by infinity, right? So this is, you know, negative four plus one over e to the infinity, positive infinity. And in the bottom, it's negative three plus two over, sorry, two over, this is two here, two over e to the positive infinity, right? So that will be negative four plus one over, well, e to the positive infinity, we said it's positive infinity, right? So this is one over positive infinity over uh, negative three plus two over positive infinity. Now, the question is, uh, what's one over positive infinity? Remember guys, we said, if you have, um, uh, you know, uh, a number over, uh, a number over infinity, that would Is be that zero. Is that undetermined? No, it's zero. It's it zero. zero. Yeah, if you have a number, a number over, over infinity, over infinity, okay, oh, that's here. So what I'm saying is if you have a number over infinity, all right, that's equal to zero. Okay, so then uh, this one over infinity is just zero. So this is just zero, right? And two over infinity here, it's also zero. This is zero, okay? So then I'm gonna have negative four plus zero and negative, so this is equal to negative four plus zero and uh, negative three plus zero. So it's negative four over negative three, which is of course a positive uh, four over three. So the answer is four over three. All right, so you see guys, so the idea here is uh, to factor out e to the x, because once you factor out e to the x, uh, you know, you're gonna have um, one over infinity and one over infinity is not an indeterminate. One over infinity is zero. Right. Professor, I have a question. Yes. Mm -hmm. can, we, can we use the rule you gave us when it's like the same? Um... For polynomials? Yes, or no. Uh, uh, okay, but uh, the exponential, you have to be careful because Okay. Uh, because, uh, you know, you can have like exponential of minus X, not the uh, uh, e, not e to the x, but you can have like mm -hmm. e to the minus x. Okay. And so, I mean, you know, you can change a little bit of the problem, but then uh, you, you won't be able to apply the, the rule. So it's, I, I mean, I see your point. You're, you, actually, your remark is very good because uh, that would be like the same rule like for polynomials uh, mm -hmm. when you compare. But uh, yeah, but um, well, um, I, my advice is not, probably not use that rule for the exponential because okay. some, you can, the exponential, you can have like very slightly different problems. Like you can have like e to the minus X or e to the three X or, you know, it, it can change. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so like for, for next one with the exponential X going to negative infinity. Um, so for X going to negative infinity, uh, um, we, we have to use the rule which says that e to the negative infinity is zero. So if this is for next, uh, uh, this is our next one. So this is um, uh, number four. So this is same problem, problem one, I guess pro uh, problem one and uh, equation number four. So this is number four. So you see here in the number uh, four, we have limit x going to negative infinity, um, three e to the x uh, plus four over uh, e to the x plus two, right? 
So um, if you replace x by negative infinity, so we have phi e to the negative infinity plus four over e to the negative infinity plus two. Now, e to the negative infinity is, uh, we said by the rule number two is zero, right? Here's uh, the rule number two. So this is uh, the rule number two. We said e to the negative infinity is zero. So this would be, um, so this would be equal to um, negative three, uh, sorry, positive three uh, times zero plus four over zero plus two. So it's just four over two, which is of course two, right? So then the answer is two, All right? So you see like here, if we had the polynomial uh, and with the negative infinity, then we would apply the, the rule with the, you know, this, the, the rule uh, where you take like the first coefficient in the top over the first coefficient in the bottom. But here, because it's X going to negative infinity, the exponential would be zero, not, uh, not infinity. So that's like different from the, the polynomials. Anyway. Um, Professor, I have a question. Yes. yes. Since there's no, like in, the, like in the last one we just did, since there's no number on the bottom, it's easy to do that then, to do three, to um what's the word which one the, the number four since the uh, equation number four. Uh -huh. since the equation doesn't have a number on, on the bottom and the on the outside where the ex is at it doesn't have like four ex then uh, uh that's uh this is three you're talking about this number here no 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 on the bottom on that. in the bottom here yeah that's just e to the x plus two. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just e, e to the x plus two. I think that's the, the, the problem, right? I mean, if you change yeah, the yeah. Reason, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was just saying that since there's no number on the bottom. Like no, no. Yeah, there's no number in the bottom. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Okay. It's just zero there. Uh, Dayanara, you are saying, can we go over the fourth problem on the second page? Uh, uh, the four, uh, you mean the third, the third problem. Uh, you, you mean the, the one with the absolute value, I guess, right? Okay, perfect. Yeah, I can do that too, sure. Uh, okay, so that's the problem number seven. Uh, I think it's number seven. Okay, perfect. So number seven. So this is number seven. So we have uh, limit x going to one minus, so it's x squared minus uh, four oh, x. Sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. sure. Uh, um, the last on uh, the one you just finished the number four. Mm -hmm. I got something different. What do you mean by different? You mean different answer? Yes. Mm, that's not possible. I mean, uh, I mean. What, what was your answer? Three. Uh, nope. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, see, I see my mistake. Uh, I did oh. X go to... Plus. Positive. Yeah, the, okay, so that's the why. Yeah. That's why I was saying, and be careful with the exponential because uh, if there's a minus, then you know, negative infinity or no, uh, uh, yeah, it's a mistake. Uh, it's all right. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, Juanita, I think your is the answer two for problem seven. Is the answer two for problem seven? This problem that you're about to do now, the with the absolute oh, value. Oh, um, um, I, uh, uh. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be, uh, you are saying what would be the answer? Let's see. Uh, two, yeah, I think it's two. Uh, let's see, I'm not, I'm not sure. I have to solve the problem. I mean, I don't have the answers. I have to solve the problem, but I think you're right. Uh, let's see, I think okay. you're right. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's over absolute value of X minus uh, one. All right, so. Uh, so first, guys, you have to understand this minus here means that one uh, x approaches one from the left. So x approaches one.
from the left. It's not negative one, it's, it's positive one, but X approaching positive one from the left. Now, if you replace uh, X by one here, you know, because X is approaching one. So when you compute the limit, just replace X by the, the number given in the problem here, which is one. So if you replace X by one, of course, you're gonna have uh, one square, which is positive one minus four plus three over uh, one minus one is zero. So it's absolute value of zero. So there will be zero over zero, right? Uh, it's negative three plus three, that's zero on the top and then zero on the bottom. So of course, this is indeterminate form. This is indeterminate form. Right. So the idea is, of course, to factor. In this case, uh, you have to factor. So we have to factor. Um, okay. And actually, you have to factor out uh, x minus, uh, well, the number given in the problem. So here it's 1. So we have to factor out x minus 1. So factor out x minus the number given in the problem. So here, which means we have to factor out x minus one, okay? Because uh, x is going to one, right? So that's our, the, that's the number given in the problem. So we have to factor out x in minus one in the top. So let's see. Uh, so we're gonna have limit x going to one minus. So here's my x minus one. Now we factor out x minus one. Uh, you know, you have x square, x square here, right? So I need to multiply this x by x to get x square. Of course, if you had like a two x square, if you had let's say two x square, then that would be two x here, right, et cetera. But here it's just x squared, so uh, it's gonna be just x here, right? So this is, oops. So this is just x, right? Now uh, you have, this is plus three. This is plus three, right? This is plus three here, plus three. Right. And then here we have minus one. So I have to multiply to get plus three. I have to multiply negative one by negative three, right? Negative one times negative three, that will be this positive three. Okay. Now in the bottom, of course, we have absolute value of X minus one. Okay. So, so what we want to do now is, of course, try to cancel out the x minus one. There's an x minus one in the top. There's an x minus one in the bottom. But we have to be careful because this is not exactly x minus one. This is absolute value of x minus one. So careful. This is, it's not, this is not x minus one, all right? It's absolute value of x minus one. Now, the thing is, um, you know, uh, the absolute value, if the number inside the absolute value is positive, uh, then absolute value of a positive number would be positive, right? I mean, absolute value of positive five is five. It's gonna be the same number, but absolute value of negative three, if you have a negative number inside the absolute value, then the absolute value would be the opposite. So that would be plus three, right? So the, the question now is you have to figure out this, whether this X minus one, is it positive? or, uh, so is it positive? So is it positive or negative? Okay, if it's positive, then absolute value of positive number would be the same number, which is X minus one. If it's negative, then you have to take the, uh, the opposite. Now, X approach uh, one from the left, um, so X approaches, you know, one from the left. This is your X here, approach one from the left. So X is less than one, right? So X less than one because it approaches one from the left. It's on the left side of one, it's less than one, right? So then 
if x is less than one, then uh, if you pick a number less than one, let's say zero. So zero minus one, it will be negative. Okay, so then x minus one is negative. All right, so for example, again, pick a number less than one and check if x minus one is positive or negative. So in this case, for example, if you pick, uh, pick x equal to zero or 0 0.5 or 0 0.8, let's say, then you know, 0 0.8 minus one, that would be negative 0 0.2, which is negative number, all right? That's negative 0 0.8 as the left side of uh, positive one. Um, so yeah, so this x minus one turns out to be negative. Uh, so uh, if you get rid of the absolute value, you need to take the opposite. So then my limit, so we're gonna have limit, sorry. So we're gonna have limit x going to the small minus. So we have x minus one times x minus three. And in the denominator, we're gonna have the, oppo the, the opposite. So it's minus and x minus one between parentheses, the opposite of x minus one. All right, so now I can, of course, now I have x minus one in the, in the top and in the bottom, so I cancel it out. So of course, when you cancel out this x minus one in the bottom, uh, it's, it's not zero in the bottom, it's one, because this is like x minus one times one, right? So this is uh, our, so this is limit, x going to one minus, it's x minus three in the top, and it's negative because of this negative here, it's negative one in the bottom. Okay, so you're done with the simplification. So then you can just uh, replace your x by the number given in the problem, which is one. So x is equal to one here, right? So if x is one, then uh, so one minus t over negative one. So there'll be negative two over negative one. And so yes, Juanita, you are absolutely right. So then the answer uh, is very good. So then the answer would be uh, positive two. So the answer is positive two. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so does it make sense to you, Dayanara? Well, I mean, I, 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 I hope you, um, uh, yes, well, very good then, very good. Um, yes, so um, is there any other requests, guys, about the limits? I can continue with the limits if you want. Any, uh, any requests about the limits? Um, you know how to do the, the first, uh, the first limits, the cone to positive infinity. Um, you know, let me just probably say just a, a quick uh, a word, two words about the number one and two, the, and the, 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 the limits. So for problem number one, for problem number one, we had, you know, limit x going to positive infinity, uh, three x squared uh, minus x, plus one uh, minus two x squared minus x uh, and then plus one. So guys, when you have x going to infinity, uh, either plus or minus, or I mean, uh, either positive or negative infinity, it doesn't matter. Um, can we do the second? Yeah, sure, uh, Juanita, yeah, we can do the, yeah, the, I'm gonna finish uh, very quickly with this uh, limit and then uh, we, can, we can do the, uh, neg the problem number six. Um, so I was saying, guys, if you have x going to positive or negative, or x going to negative, okay? So what you can do is you can compare the highest power. So let me just remind you the rule here. So if x goes to either positive or negative infinity, it doesn't matter, okay? And, uh, and you have, and we have uh, polynomials. So what do I mean by polynomials is uh, powers of x. So we have polynomials in the, in the, in the top and, and the bottom, right? So what we can do is we can compare compare the highest powers 
the highest power of x in the top and uh, the bottom. Okay, so like here, in this case, the highest power of x in the top is uh, two, right? This is, here is two, right? This is two. Here in the bottom is also two. And um, uh, yes, they are not, we can do problems two and three, sure. Um, so then if they are, they are the same, uh, they are equal, then actually the answer would be this first coefficient here, the coefficient of x squared over the coefficient of uh, x squared in the bottom. So here the answer should, be, it's actually three over uh, negative two, right? Because uh, you have the same, the highest power in the, in the top is the same as the highest power in the, in the bottom, okay? But if, for example, in number two, in the problem number two, I mean, in the, in the limit number two, uh, it's again limit, x going to positive infinity, uh, you have, uh, you know, x, x cubed, you know, minus four x plus two, and here minus two x squared minus x plus one. So again, your x is going to positive infinity. Then you compare the power. So here in the top, the highest power is, uh, this is three. Okay, and the one in the bottom is uh, two, right? The highest power in the bottom is two. So the, the power in the top is larger than the one in the bottom, right? So in this case, if the, the top, the power in the top is larger than the bottom, then the answer would be infinity. So this is actually answer is actually infinity, right? So if, so this is if the highest power in the top is larger, is larger than the one in the bottom. Okay. And, it, you know, for number, number three, the, the third, um, uh, for the third limit, the third limit. Um, so we have limit x going to positive infinity. Um, where is it? So it's x plus five and um, it's x squared plus one, right? So the highest power in the top is one. The highest power in the bottom is two. So now the power in the, in, the, in the bottom is larger than the one in the top. So in this case, the answer would be actually zero. So this is zero. So this is when the power in the top is less than the power in the bottom. Okay. Um, all right, so um, any question guys? So that's for, so th this is whenever you have x going to infinity and you have polynomials. Again, it's important that you have polynomials. If you have exponential or log or, the, uh, it's a different story, okay? A kind of uh, different story. But anyway, so um, you, uh, you guys, you ask about, uh, first, uh, so Juanita, you asked about second part of problem number six. Okay, and then Dayanara, you are you ask about problems problems two and three. Okay, let's do but that. But you so, can keep going in order, though. Okay, I can do that. Sure. Okay, that so work. then, okay, I think we have time. We still have, we still have time, right? Uh, so let's yeah. So okay, so let's do a problem two, three, and then uh, six, and then uh, we'll see. All right. So um, so problem. This is problem number two. Uh, let's see, uh, problem number two. Okay, so yeah, for each, for each value, see the following function is continuous at x equal to two. So your f of x, um, so it's x squared minus uh, c squared if x less than two and uh, 2cx minus one if x is larger than two. So for which value of, the, of, the, of c, the following function is continuous as x equal to two. So then, so again, guys, the idea is 
Um, so let me just write down here the idea. Uh, so C is just a, it's some number. Uh, we don't care what's uh, the, the number C. Uh, the idea is the following. So here's your two, X equal to two, right? Right here. And then uh, on the left, if X is less than two, so we have this X squared minus uh, C squared. So this is X squared minus C squared, right? And then on the right side of two, if X is larger than two, we have a different equation, right? We have this, uh, this is your, you know, this is your TC, uh, two times C times X minus one, right? So, so it's like you have, you know, uh, two different equations or two different graphs uh, and then the question is, you want uh, this graph here to be continuous. So which means that you want your, your green graph on the left side of two, you want your green graph here to coincide with the right graph, uh, I mean, the yellow graph on the right side of two. So you need, uh, you know, you need this green point to coincide with the yellow one, okay? So if they coincide, then you won't have like a, a hole or jump at X equal to two, right? So you wanna these two points to be equal, to be the same. So we wanna, we want these two points to be the same, to be equal. So to be equal to the, to the yellow one, right? So, because if they are equal, if they are the same point, then they would they would coincide, and which means that uh, you, you know then your graph would be continuous. You you uh, you won't have you know the same point, so then you won't have a jump or a hole at x equal to two, right? At x equal to two. So this this one here it's continuous, of course at x equal to two, All right? So now, how do we compute the left, the, the green point and the yellow point? Well, the green point, that's, you know, that's your, um, that's the value of the function f when you approach two from the left, right? When you approach two from the left, the corresponding values of the function f, so here's the corresponding values of the function f, right? Here, these values here, they approach uh, your point here, right? So when you compute the limit x approaching two from the left, you get uh, the, the first point here, the, 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 this one here, the blue one, all right? And if you compute the limit from the right, when x approaches two from the right, you're gonna, the values, the corresponding values of the function f, they're gonna approach this point here, so that will be the point on the right side of two. So, so what I'm saying is we want the limit. So we want uh, the limit of f of x when x approaches two from the left, right? So that will be, the, we want this limit to be equal to the limit of f of x when x approaches two from the right, right? So if they are equal, then you're gonna have the same point. And so then your graph is gonna be continuous at x equal to two. Now, uh, so now what's the limit of f of x, x going to two minus? So you are approaching two from the left, which means uh, you're less than two. So here, um, so we approach two from the left, from the left. So it's less than two. Your X is less than two. Here, you approach two from the right. So you, then your X is larger than two. Larger than two, All right? So if you are less than two, of course, you're gonna use the, the first equation. And if you are larger than two, then you're gonna use the second equation, right? So let's use the, the first equation uh, when X approaches two uh, minus because uh, you would be less than two, your X would be less than two, right? So here, uh, so this limit, uh, limit F of X, 
x going to two minus. So here we're gonna use the first equation, right? Because you are approaching two from the left. And so uh, your x is gonna be less than two. So this is limit x going to two minus. So what's the equation of f when x is less than two? It's the x squared minus c, c squared, right? x squared minus c squared, right? So how do we compute such limit? Well, just replace x by the given number in the problem, which is, it's, which is two, right? So I'm gonna replace x. So this is equal to, and uh, we're gonna replace x by two. So that's two square minus c square. So that's two square minus c square. Now, if you wanna compute the limit, of f of x, x approaching, so x approaches two from the right. Okay, so again, this is from the right, we said it's larger than two. So uh, we're gonna use the second equation, right? Because that's when x is larger than two. So this is limit, x is going to two plus. And the second equation, uh, x larger than two is two, cx minus one, All right? So that's, uh, again, uh, just if you wanna compute this limit, just substitute x. So here x equal to two. Uh, so we're gonna have two times c times two minus one, All right? That would be four c minus one. So which is equal to, of course, four c minus one. So uh, from the left, uh, sorry, from the right, you got a four C minus one. Uh, from the left, this is uh, two square minus C square. So it's four minus uh, C square, right? So from the left, we got four minus C square. And from the right, we got four, mi four C minus one. So we want the left to be equal, the left limit to be equal to the right limit. So we want, the left limit, which is a four minus C to be equal to, uh, sorry, four minus, four minus C square. I forgot the square. So it's four minus C square to be equal to the right limit, which is four C minus one. Okay. So we want to solve this equation, right? And, uh, well, so, I mean, we have C square, that's a quadratic equation, right? Because we have C square. So uh, let's see, um, you can move, let's say the C minus C square to the right side. So let's move everything to the right side. So this is, uh, or, or the, to the left side, it's up to you guys. Um, so this is a plus C square here, plus C square here. So that will be uh, four equals to C square plus four C minus one, right? And then we can subtract four, subtract four minus four. So this is zero. And on the right side, of course, it would be uh, C square uh, plus four C minus, uh, so minus one minus four, uh, that would be negative or minus five, right? Uh, so it's a C squared plus four C minus five equal to zero. So this is a quadratic equation. Of course, you can use a quadratic formula. So it's, um, so if you use a quadratic formula, so let me just remind you the quadratic, quadratic formula. So it's X equal to minus B plus or minus, you know, B squared minus four AC over two A, right? So then, so our C, so this is just a, to remind you of the quadratic formula. So then our C would be minus uh, four or negative four plus or minus square root of B square, four square, that's 16 minus four times A, A is one times C here, it's negative five, All right? The whole thing over two A, so it's over two times one, All right? So then, So then your C uh, would be negative four 
plus or minus. So uh, 16 uh, minus four times negative five. So that would be a plus. So this is, this is a plus. Uh, so it's 16 plus 20. Uh, 16 plus 20 is 36. And the square root of 36, of course, would be six. So it's a negative four plus or minus six over two. So then, so we're gonna have two solutions. So C, a negative four plus six. Uh, so negative four plus six over two. So that would be positive two over two. That would be one. So that's the first solution or so second solution would be uh, negative four minus uh, six over two. So that's negative 10 over two, and that would be negative five. That's our second solution, uh, negative five. So that's the final answer here. This is the final answer. Uh, so what we are saying guys is that if C is positive one or C is negative five, then, uh, so you see this, your, 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 the green point here would be equal to the red point. So they would coincide, right? And then your function or your graph is gonna be continuous, right? Like, uh, you know, like here. So if the two points are equal, the blue and the, the red one, if they are equal or the same, so then the function is gonna be continuous. There will be a no interruption in the graph. So it would be a continuous graph, all right? Any, um, any question guys? All right, so that's for problem number two. Um, so we said uh, we're gonna do number two and then uh, problem three. And then I think Juanita, she asked about number six. Uh, the, yeah, at least the second part of number six, but let's do first the number three and then we can do the number six and then we see. Um, all right, so then, um, okay, so this is for problem uh, number two. So for problem number three, here's a problem number three. Um, so we have a function f. Um, so let f of x, so it's given by, uh, it's x squared minus three. If x is less than two, uh, then two x minus three, if x larger than two, All right? So first question, is f of x continuous at x equal to two? So is f of x continuous at x equal to two, right? So then, um, you know, guys, um, so it's the same idea for continuity, right? Um, um, so you uh, you have your graph, here's two, this is x equal to two here, right? So you have the first equation for x less than two. So here, this is where x is less than two. And then um, uh, from uh, the right side, you have this two x, minus three. And the left one you have, this is x squared minus uh, three. Anyway, so again, the same problem here. Okay, so we have, um, you know, you, you want these two points to be equal, to be the same. So if they are equal, if they coincide, then of course, then your, your graph is gonna be continuous at x equal to two. There will be no jump at x equal to two, right? So we want the limit so you want this limit from the left. So here, this is the limit of your function f from the left to be equal to the limit of, of your function f uh, from the right of uh, from the right of two here. Okay. So from the left. So x. So limit of f of x x approaching two from the left. So if you approach two from the left, of course, it means that x is less than two. 
So if x is less than two, then we're gonna use the first equation, right? This is, of course, here it's less than two, All right? So we're gonna use the first, first equation here. So the first equation. So then limit of, f of uh, uh, your, the, 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 the first equation is x squared minus t. So here, your f is x squared minus t, right? Because your x is, again, it's less than two because it approaches two from the left. So x minus three, x approaches two from the left, All right? So how do we compute this, the limit? So again, first thing, whenever you wanna compute any limit, all right, you just replace x by the number given to the limit. So here the number is, uh, is two. So I'm gonna just replace x by two. Uh, so here, this is equal to, so equal to, uh, my x is equal to two. So that would be two squared minus t. So that's four uh, minus t, and that would be equal to one, of course. Okay, so this is the limit of f of x, the values of f of x, x going to approaching two from the left. Now, uh, what will be the limit of f of x when x approaches two from the right? So if your x approaches two from the right, it means that x is larger than two. So, um, so now the limit from the right, so x going to two plus, uh, well, two plus from the right means that X is larger than two. Yes, Juanita, absolutely. So we're gonna use the second equation. So this is larger than two. So here we're gonna use the second equation. Right. So, so we're gonna have limit X going to two plus, but then, so my second equation is gonna be two X minus three. It's not X squared, it's two X now minus three. But anyway, so you wanna compute this limit. So um, you just replace X by two. As I said, that's the, the first thing you wanna do whenever you wanna compute the limit, just replace X uh, by the number given in the limit. So it's two. Uh, and uh, so that would be two times two minus three, that's four minus three. Again, it's gonna be positive one. So you see guys, either you use a, uh, the first equation or the second equation, uh, when you approach uh, two from the left or you approach two from the right, you're gonna get the same number, which is uh, one, All right? So, um, so the limit uh, from the left, again, so when I say the limit of f of x from the left, I really mean this point here. So this is my left, left of two, and I'm going to this point. All right, this is the limit of f of x, x going to two. Now, I'm saying this limit, the red point is actually equal to the limit of this, uh, this point, which is, that's exactly what I mean by the limit of f of x, x approaching, approaching two from the right. That would be this green point. So what, I, so what I'm saying is that actually these two points are the same, they are equal to one, right? So both correspond to one. So, um, Uh, so the limit, so the limit of f of x, x approaching two minus is equal to the limit of f of x, x approaching, uh, approaches two plus from the, two from the right uh, is equal to one, which is actually equal to f of one, right? f of one is, uh, sorry, which is equal to f of two, right? I mean, f of f of two would be a uh, four minus three would be one. So this is actually equal to f of two, which is one, right? That's, right? that's the one, that's the number we got in the limit, right? So the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right is equal to f of two, which is of course uh, positive. So yeah, so then this function f is uh, continuous uh, at one. A question for that. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, not for this one. I got the same answer for this question, but for the mm -hmm. question right after this one, mm -hmm. where it's asking if it's differentiable and then determine the f prime two. Yes. I put that it wasn't differentiable because when I did the um the limit with 
um, approaching from both sides. Yes. From the right, I got four. And then from the left, I got two. And then That's correct. F prime of two, I got four. No, actually, so you, you got, it's correct. So uh, very good. So you're saying uh, from the left, you got four from the, uh, from the right, you got two. That's excellent. That's correct. And so because the left is not equal to the right, then actually your F is not differentiable. So this F prime of two actually do not exist. Okay. Thank if you. If they are not equal. Yes. So yes, absolutely. Uh, so if they are, if they are not equal, the limit from the left and limit from the right, then your derivative do not exist. So it's not differentiable. Thank but you're you. right. Yeah, very good. So yeah, the answer should be from the left should be um, should be four, and from the from the right should be two. Absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. So th but for this one here, uh, this one is continuous actually, um, because uh, limit from the left is uh, you know is equal to the limit from the right. So then here conclusion. So this is conclusion. So yes, f of x is actually continuous. F2. Okay. Now, as you said, uh, for differentiability at x equal to 2, so if you, okay, so now we're going to move to the differentiability, right? So uh, the question now is f of x differentiable? So is f of x uh, differentiable. At x equal to two. So you have to find this f prime of two. Okay. So uh, guys, uh, so let me first remind you. So what's this uh, f prime of two? Well, let me just remind the definition f prime of a f prime of a should be f prime. So f prime of a uh, should be limit h going to zero. Again, f of a plus h, you know, minus f of a, like uh, for the tangent line over h, right? And of course, here we are we are talking about x equal to two, so your a is two. So here x is equal to two, so your a is two. All right. So if you want to compute this f prime of a, so you want to compute f prime of two. So you want to find, so limit h going to zero of f of uh, two plus h minus f of two over h, All right? Now, now the big question is, uh, what's f of two plus h, All right? So now the question is, what's f of two plus h? So which equation we're gonna use? We are going to use. Well, the thing is, so we have to figure out whether two plus h um, is, uh, is less or uh, is larger than two, right? Well, remember what's h? h is approaching zero. So when you say h approaches zero, it means that h is not actually zero. It approaches zero. Um, so, uh, but the thing is if h is on the left side of zero, it's gonna be negative. And if it's on the right side of zero, it's gonna be positive. So if h is on the left side of zero and it's negative, then two plus h is gonna be less than two if h is negative. And if h is positive, it's going to be larger than 2. So you see, guys, um, we have to use here, we have to use the, the two equations. So ha here we have two limits to compute. So, um, so depending on whether h is positive or negative, so here we have two, uh, there are two limits. limits going to compute uh, depending on 
uh, whether H is positive or uh, negative. Okay. Professor. Yes. I have a question. Uh, yes. Let's say if uh, um, let's say if uh, the function is uh, differentiable at uh, x equal to one, mm -hmm. and we have the same uh, function x x squared minus three if x uh, less than two, mm -hmm. or two x minus three if x uh, larger um, than two. Larger than two. Mm -hmm. So in, in that case, we use only the equation one. Yeah, so you're asking about the next uh, question, right? If uh, is f of x differentiable at x equal to one? Yes, for x equal to one, uh, there's only one limit uh, to compute. Uh, it's actually the, the first equation because uh, you you're gonna have f of one plus h and uh, one plus h, you have to keep in mind that your h is very, very close to, uh, to zero, okay? So one plus h is gonna be a number which is very, very close to one, right? Because h is very, very close to zero. You can imagine like your h is 0 0.01, okay? So then if you have one plus 0 0.01, that will be very close to one. So it's still less than two. So yes, um, uh, Next, when we're gonna do check if f of x differentiable at x equals to one, there is only one equation to use, which is the, the first uh, equation. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. But here, the thing is, even if h is very, very, h, h is very, very close to zero, let's say h is, I mean, h is, uh, could be 0 0.01 or negative 0 0.01, but if it's positive 0 0.01, 2 plus 0 0.01, that would be larger than 2. And if h is negative 0 0.01, 2 plus uh, negative 0 0.01, that would be less than 2. So you see, uh, it's not the same case uh, when you have uh, x equal to 1, right? But anyway, so here we have two limits. Um, so first limit in, is when h going to 0, zero minus. So limit h going to 0 minus. Um, you have f of uh, 2 plus h minus f of 2 over h. So this would be equal to, so here in this case, because h is negative, so here h is negative. So then 2 plus h is less than 2. Okay, so then we have to use the first equation. Okay, so then that would be limit h going to zero minus f of two plus h. We're gonna use the first equation. So uh, first equation is x squared minus three. So you have to substitute x by uh, two plus h. So that will be two plus h, you know, square minus three, all right, and then there is this, you know, there's this minus f of two. So here's my minus. Now what's f of two? Well, if x is equal to two, that's the second equation, right? Uh, x can be equal to two in the second equation. So if you plug two in the second equation, then you're gonna have uh, two times two minus three, that would be uh, four minus three, that would be one, right? So here, that would be f of two, it's actually one over h. So, yeah, anyway, so this is uh, limit h going to zero minus. So uh, you have to distribute this two plus h times two plus h, you know, two plus h times two plus h. And then there's minus t minus one. So that would be minus four over h, All right? So then limit h going to zero minus. So now we have to distribute. So two plus H times two plus H, you're gonna have four terms, two times two, four, two times H is two H plus H times two, that would be another two H, then H times H, that would be H uh, squared. And then there's minus four, four, the whole thing of course over H. And then uh, of course, uh, four here cancel out. Uh, 
And, uh, you know, so this is a limit, h going to zero minus, uh, two plus h plus two, uh, two h plus two h, that would be four h plus h uh, square over h. So of course here, if you replace h by zero, we're gonna have zero over zero, that's in the term form. So we have to factor and you can actually in the top, you know, you can factor out h as a common factor. So this is limit h going to zero minus, factor out h. So that's h times four for h plus h times h, h that will be h uh, square. The whole thing of course divided by h. All right, so then of course uh, h here cancel out. So it's gonna be just a four plus h. So this is, so this is equal. So this is equal to limit h going to zero minus. Remember this is when you cancel out the h in the bottom, that's h times one. So it's a one left in the bottom. So it's just four plus h over one. So it's four plus h. And then of course, uh, just substitute h by zero. So that's four plus zero. And um, um, yeah, so four plus zero, that would be four. So you see, this is the limit from the left. It's actually four. Um, or uh, if you want, this is the slope. This is the slope of your graph uh, on the left of, uh, on the left side of two. Now on the right side, the h going to zero plus. Now for the right side, limit h going to zero plus. Um, so it's, uh, again, let me write down here. The formula, it's f of uh, two plus h uh, minus f of two again over, over h. So here we said h going to zero plus. So then h is positive. And if h is positive, then two plus h is larger than two. And if it's larger than two, then we use the second, second equation. So uh, now, uh, so that will be limit h going to zero plus. So now we're gonna use the second equation for the f of two plus h. So we have to substitute x by two plus h. So it's two times x. So that'll be two times the two plus h and then minus three, all right? And then in the, in, the, in the definition here, of course, we have minus. So here's my minus and f of two, we said f of two is a one. So minus one here over h, all right? So then if you distribute, so, um, so the limit uh, h going to zero plus, two times two, that'd be four, two times h is two h minus the minus one, that's minus four over h. So we have four minus four here to cancel out. So it's two h over h. So it's uh, two h over h. And of course h cancel out. So this is actually equal to two. So, so you see guys uh, from uh, the left side, the limit, the slope of the tangent line uh, uh, from the left is four. Uh, this is from the left. And from the right, the slope is, uh, is positive two. So they are different. So the slope from the left is different from the slope from the right. So remember, this is like our example of the, the corner. Remember we had a corner. So we said the, the slope from the left would be uh, uh, you know, let's say negative or positive, and then the slope from the right would be the opposite sign. So then, um, then f is not differentiable. So, so conclusion here. Uh, conclusion. Um, so conclusion. All right. So. Um, so um, um, 
uh, you know, the limit of h uh, going to zero minus of f of uh, two plus h minus f of two over h. So this is the slope from the left. It's different from the slope from the right. h going to zero plus. Over h, so then uh, this f prime, then this f prime of two do not exist. So then, uh, you know, f prime of two, f prime of two is this is supposed to be the limit h going to zero of f of two plus h minus f of two over h. So this is the limit from both sides, right? This is you know, our, our uh, initial limit is this limit from bo both sides. This is from the both sides. But what we are saying is that the left side doesn't coincide with the right side. So then the limit from both sides do not exist. So this number here, f prime of two, uh, do not exist. Okay, so then this f prime, then this f, uh, f of x is not differentiable. Is not differentiable at, uh, of course, at x, at x equal to two. All right. Any question guys about this? Uh, I mean, for, for, for sure, you're gonna have a similar problem in the test. I mean, you need to make sure that you know how to answer uh, similar problems, right? Uh, I mean, uh, for 100%, uh, this is gonna be in the, in the test. Uh, you know, you need to know, um, you know, uh, how to compute this limit from the left, limit from the right, and see whether uh, they are equal uh, or not, okay? So uh, if there's no question, guys, um, yeah. So let me um, say a couple of words, I mean, about this uh, next, um, which is differentiability at x equal to one. So just again, to explain the difference between x equal to two and x equal to one. So now, so now the question is, is f of x differentiable at x equals one, right? And you have to find f prime of one, right? So, so in this f prime of two, uh, you know, here, we had to compute the limit from the left and the limit from the right, okay? Now, what about this f prime of one? So let me write down the definition of f prime of one. So Again, the, the general definition, f prime of a is supposed to be like limit, you know, h going to zero of f of a plus h uh, minus f of a over h, right? So your a is one, your a is one, f prime of one, that will be limit h going to zero, f of one plus h minus f of one over h, okay? So the question is, What's f of one plus h? Which equation we're gonna use for f of one plus h? So uh, the question is, so what's, so which equation um, we will use uh, for f of one plus h, right? So the question is, is one plus h, is it less or larger than, uh, than two, right? Because remember your function f, f of x, you know, you have a first equation if x is less than two and another equation if x is larger than two, right? So we have to compare uh, one plus h to two, right? So we have to compare one plus h to, uh, to two. Now the thing is, uh, you know, h, of course, h could, could be positive or negative, but you need to keep in mind that your h is very close 
to zero. It's actually as close as, we, as you want from zero, but it's not equal to zero. It's very close, but not equal to zero. It's very close to zero. Of course, it could be positive or negative, but it's still very close to zero. So you can pick a number, for example, as I said, uh, um, uh, for example, you pick uh, 0 0.01, okay? So H could be, you can think of H as, for example, again, it could be as, as close as you want from zero. So for example, H could be, let's say plus or minus, it could be positive or negative, uh, 0 0.01, right? That's a number very close to zero. Now, if you do one plus H, right? It's one plus or minus 0 0.01. Zero one, you know, it's still uh, even if uh, it's plus uh, zero point zero one, it's still less than uh, two, right? This is less than two in both cases. In both cases. All right. So if it's, um, you know, if it's less than two in both cases, uh, if H is positive or negative, then uh, you have to use uh, the first equation, right? So the only equation you have to use here is the first one. So the conclusion is, so the only equation we use is the first one. we use is the first one. Okay. So again, keep in mind, your age could be positive or negative, but it's always very close to zero. It's as close as you want from zero actually. Okay. But of course not equal to zero. Um, so there's only one equation to use. So, uh, which is a uh, good news actually. So. Uh, then um, we can complete this f prime of one. Um, um, so there's no, no need for uh, zero minus or zero plus. Uh, so this is f uh, prime of one, it's limit, h going to zero, no need for plus or minus, it's the same. We're gonna use the same uh, equation anyway, uh, either zero plus or zero minus. Uh, so we're gonna use the first equation, which is x squared. So we have to substitute x uh, by one plus h, right? Because again, this is, remember guys, this is our, here's our definition. So f of one plus h minus f of one. Um, so f of one plus h, sub substitute x by one plus h. So that will be one plus h first equation, All right? This is a first, this is the first equation here. So one plus h squared. Right, and then there's minus three. And then of course here in the definition, there is this minus f of one. So here's minus f of one. Again, f of one, we said uh, it's one, right? Uh, we use the second equation for f of one. So it's one minus f of one. So it's one over, over h, over h. This is minus of course, right? So, Of course, now we distribute. I mean, we uh, compute the one plus h squared. So f prime of one, this is limit h going to zero. So one plus h uh, squared, it's one square uh, plus h, h uh, square uh, plus two times h, right? This is, again, this is one plus h uh, squared. It's one plus h uh, squared. Then there is minus t and then minus one over over H, All right? So then, um, so this is, um, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, I said F of one is, we use the, the um, we, we, f of one is, uh, we, we use the first equation for f of one, right? X is less than two, sorry. 
I said the second equation should be the, the, the first equation. So here, sorry, here f of one. So what's f of one, guys? I forgot to compute f of one actually. So f of one is we use the first uh, equation, right? It's one square minus three. I forgot to evaluate f of one. So it's, you know, uh, it's uh, one minus three. So it's uh, negative two, right? So f of one is actually negative two, right? So here it should be minus negative two here. This is negative two here. This is negative two, right? Again, I here, so we have to, we have to find f of one, right? Here's your f of one. And uh, I'm saying, because one is less than two, of course, then you have to use the first equation, right? So that's one square minus t, it's negative two. So it's minus negative two there. So now, so let's compute this thing here, this limit. So then f prime of one, uh, limit, uh, h going to zero. So we have one square, that's one plus h square plus two h minus three and then plus two minus minus, right? Remember this, this minus here is my minus and then negative two. So it's plus two. So this would be a plus two. So this is a plus two here over, over h, right? So in the top, let's see the constant. So we have one, one minus uh, three, it's negative two. Uh, plus two, that would be zero. So the constant here cancel out. All right, so then, so this is limit. So F prime of one, so it's a limit, uh, H going to zero, H squared plus two H over H. Of course, again, if you replace H by zero, uh, you, you know, you're gonna have, uh, zero over zero, that's an indeterminate form. So we have to factor uh, H, uh, factor out H. So this is equal to the limit, H going to zero, factor out H in the top. So here's an H uh, plus two over H. And then of course here, um, H in the top, H in the bottom, they cancel out. So it's just H, H plus two. So F prime of one, F f prime of one is the limit h going to zero of h plus two, right? And then now we are done a simplification, just uh, replace h by zero. So here my h is zero. So that's zero plus two. And so zero plus two. And so the answer is two. So what I'm saying here, guys, is that f prime of one is equal to a uh, positive two. So f prime of one, so conclusion, so conclusion here, my f, f prime of one. Again, in this case, we have to use only one equation, which is the first equation, right? So we have only one limit to compute, which is the limit from both sides. So this f of f prime of one is actually equal to two, right? So then of course, um, so this, this number f prime of one exists. So f prime, f prime of one exists, it's equal to two, so then, f of x is differentiable, right? Because the f prime of one exists. So then the function is differentiable. Remember f prime of two do not exist. So then f is not differentiable, but in this case it's, it exists. So then f is differentiable. So f of x is, so f of x is uh, uh, differentiable at, x equal to one. All right, so um, so you see guys, I hope, um, I mean, I hope you understand the difference between, um, you know, the, the two cases, right? Uh, if, if f of x differentiable at x equal to two and x equal to one, right? It's, uh, you know, you have to understand your, your uh, the value of your age. So you need to think of age as, you know, a very small number close to zero. But if you are close to zero, uh, it could be, of course, positive or negative. 
but uh, yeah, so that's, yeah. So um, any question guys? All right, no questions? No, I don't have a question, Professor. Okay, perfect. So then um, uh, we said uh, we can do, what else? Let's see. I think, uh, I mean, <laughs> we did most of the problems. Uh, uh, we talk about, I think Juanita, you asked for number six, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, which uh, function, the first or the second? The, the two X squared minus X plus two or the one over X plus one? I mean, of course I can, I can do both, but uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's up to you. Um, well, um, I mean, let's do uh, the second one, right? The sec is the second one, because the first one, I don't know if I got it right, but the first one I got F prime of X is four X minus one. And then yes, correct. F second prime of X, I got four. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Okay, that's both is correct. So I just need help with the second one, which is the one over X plus, X plus one. one. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, so, um, right. So this is a problem number six. Problem number six. Um, so your F of X is one over X plus one. Okay, guys, uh, let me uh, tell you. So in the test, you have to show all your work. I mean, to compute the derivative, you know, F prime, F second, uh, you have to show all your, all your uh, work, okay? So no work, no credits. So in your, in your answer, you have to, you know, um, write down all the steps and uh, you have to show all your, your, uh, your uh, work, okay? That's really important, okay? Uh, so like uh, here for F prime of X, uh, so first you need to write down the definition of F prime of X. Uh, we said it's a limit as usual, H going to zero of F of uh, uh, X plus H minus F of X over, over H, okay? So that's the definition of F prime of X. Now, um, so we know f of x, uh, we need to uh, figure out this f of x plus h, right? So uh, we know this f of x is just this one over x plus one, but then we need to find this f of x plus h, right? Uh, well, f of x plus h, you know, f of x is one over x plus, uh, x plus one. So then f of x plus h, so we have to substitute x by x plus h. There's an, an x in here, this X here, right? So then that will be one over, so instead of X, we're gonna have X plus H. So here's my X plus H, X plus H. And then there's plus one, of course. Okay. So that's your F of X plus H. Now let's compute the limit. So your F prime of X, So it's limit h going to zero. So f of x plus h, uh, this f of x plus h, we said it's one over x plus h plus one, all right? And then there's minus, this minus here. So here's my minus um, f of x. So my f of x is one over x plus one, all right? And then of course the whole thing over h. Okay, now uh, subtraction of fractions at the top. So just be careful, uh, you need the common denominator. So you have to cross multiply. So what I mean by cross multiply. Um, so here you have to multiply by X plus H plus one, X plus H plus one. And here you have to multiply by X plus one. And here's X plus one, all right? So then your F prime of X, So then your F prime of X would be limit H going to zero. 
So x plus one here over x plus one times x plus h plus one minus, and here it's x plus h plus one over uh, x plus one times x plus h plus one. Right? The whole thing, of course, over h. Now you have a common denominator, so you can um, subtract the the top of the fractions. So um, so your f prime of x would be limit h going to zero. So this is x plus one minus, this is, here's a minus, a minus. So just be careful here, you use parentheses um, with the x plus one plus, uh, plus h plus one, okay? Because you have to subtract the whole fractions, right? So the whole fraction. So when you subtract the x plus h plus one, it has to be between parentheses. And then of course, this whole thing over this x plus one times the x plus h plus one and divided by our h. Okay, so then, um, so then your f prime of x, uh, that will be limit, h going to zero. So it's x plus one minus x minus, distribute the sign, x minus x minus h minus one over this x plus one x plus h plus one, the whole thing divided by h. Now uh, we have a simplification in the top. So I mean, my x minus x cancel out. This is a one minus, uh, one, minus one cancel out, right? So uh, there's only minus, a, a minus h uh, left in the top. So that will be, so f prime of x. So limit h going to zero. So in the top, we have this minus h over this x plus one, x plus h plus one, right? And then the whole thing divided, of course, the whole fraction divided by, uh, by h, so here over h, right? So just be careful here. I mean, division of fractions, uh, this uh, denominator, you can make it as a fraction uh, if you divide by one right, h over one. So then, uh, you know, you have to flip this fraction here. So, um, so this f prime of x uh, would be limit, you know, h going to zero. So minus h over this x plus one, x plus h plus one times, and then you flip the h over one. So it's one over h, all right? So now guys, uh, there's h in the top, h in the bottom. I mean, this h here, cancel out this h, all right? So we are left with negative one in the top. So it's negative one in the top. So f prime of x, so f prime of x, it's limit of h going to zero negative one in the top, and then there's this x plus one, x plus h plus one, right? Then of course, now we are done with simplification. All we have to do is replace uh, h by zero. So if you replace h by zero, so then this f prime of x, okay, so this f prime of x, so replace h by zero. That will be, uh, so that will be negative one over x plus one times uh, x plus zero plus one. So it's x plus one, right? So that will be negative one over x plus one squared. So that's the f prime, uh, f prime of x. So it's this negative one over x plus one uh, squared. Right. So just be careful with the fractions, guys. I mean, uh, when you need to, uh, to get common denominator, etc., when you divide fractions. Um, um, okay. So just be careful. Um, okay. So that's for f prime of x. Um, now we have to do the the f second. 
uh, f second of x. Um, is there first, is there any question about this f prime of x? Um, uh, I mean, you know, you have the no. formula. Okay, yeah. Um, I mean, you have the formula, just be careful, uh, you know, with the computations, um, with the limit. Uh, now for f second. So let me first remind you the formula for f second. I mean, f second of x. Uh, um, for f second, yes. we use the, um, the answer we just got, the negative yeah. one yeah. square. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we, we have to use this, the answer we got here, yes. Um, yeah, so it's a limit, h going to zero, and then it will be f prime. So this answer here, which is f prime of x. So f prime of x plus h minus f prime of x over h, All right? Um, okay, so um, we know f prime of x is just the, yeah, the answer we got. So it's negative one over x, x plus one square. Um, so this is limit h going to zero. So what, what about the f prime of x plus h? So what will be f prime of x plus h? Um, you know, uh, this one here, f prime of x plus h. So all you have to do guys is just, uh, you know, substitute this x by x plus h. So we're gonna have like x plus h uh, plus one square, right? So, um, so uh, we're gonna have, um, you know, negative one over, and then it's gonna, we're gonna have x, x plus h, and then there's plus one square, right? So this is x plus h and then plus one square. And then minus f prime of x, so it's minus, uh, f prime of x is negative, right? So just be careful, here's a negative one here over x plus one square. Right, um, you know, there's this minus. This is here's my minus. This is my minus here. All right, and f prime, f prime. There's another minus, right? Anyway, so this is, of course, this whole thing is uh, over uh, over h. So this is this whole thing is over h. Okay. Uh, so that will be uh, limit h going to zero, so negative uh, uh, one x plus h plus one squared minus uh, negative one, that would be plus, this is plus one over x plus one square. All right, uh, okay, so that's the whole thing over h. So now, of course, again, common denominator, um, uh, you know, uh, here you have to multiply by x plus one square, the top and the bottom, x plus one square. And here you have to multiply by this x plus h plus one square. Okay, so what, what I'm saying guys is that, um, so this f prime of x, so this is limit, h going to zero. So it's gonna be minus or negative one times this x plus one square. So it's gonna be x plus one square, all right? Um, um, plus, you know, plus this x plus h plus one square. So plus the x plus h plus one square. The whole thing divided by the common denominator which is, so we have x plus h plus one square times the x plus one square, right? The whole thing divided by h, right? So again, guys, here you need the common denominator as usual. Once you have the common denominator, then you can add the, the top of the fractions, right? Um, now, now we have to simplify the top, right? Um, so you have to, um, you know, you have to um, distribute this, the minus x plus one square, etc. So you can compute uh, the top here, 
So let's compute this thing. Um, so this is a limit, h going to zero. So this is x plus one square. So it's like, you know, minus uh, x square uh, minus one and then minus two uh, x, right? So what, what, what I'm talking about here, guys, is this, you see this minus uh, x plus, plus one square? That will be this thing here. Okay, if you, I mean, if you uh, multiply x plus one by x plus one, and then there's a minus, right? Now, there's a plus, there's a plus here. Okay, so here's my plus. Now, this x plus h plus one times x plus h plus one, right? So if you uh, compute x plus h plus one times x plus h plus one, uh, you're gonna have, um, uh, probably not have in a space here, but it's gonna you're gonna have like x square, um, you know x x square plus uh, one square uh, plus two uh, x, uh, you know, uh, and then uh, plus h uh, square, right, and then plus um, then plus um, uh, two times, okay, so two times, oops, two times hx, right, and then plus two times h. Right? So, so what I'm saying, guys, is that you see this x plus h plus one plus one squared, so if you multiply like x plus h plus one times x plus h plus one, you're gonna have this whole thing here, this one here, All right? Now, this whole thing divided by, of course, by, so this whole thing divided by this x plus h plus one square times x plus one square, the whole thing again divided by h, All right? Now, um, so there are some constellations here in the top. So uh, you see this is minus, minus x square plus x square. There is this minus one plus one, and there is this minus two x plus two x, right? So uh, there is only, so this would be limit, so limit, h going to zero. So we're gonna have h squared plus two hx plus two h over uh, this x plus h plus one square, uh, you know, x plus one square, the whole thing divided by h, right? So again, this is division of fractions. Um, you know, this is, um, uh, you, uh, this h in the bottom, you can you can make it as a fraction. So this is h over one, and then you have to flip this one as usual. So that will be uh, you know limit. So limit h going to zero. H going to zero. So we're gonna have h square plus two hx plus two h over this, this x plus h plus one square times x plus one square and times flip the h over one, that will be one over h. Now guys, uh, there's another constellation here. You see in the top, in the top here, uh, I mean, h is a common factor, right? So here you can pull out H, you can factor out H. Um, so um, if you factor out H in the top, um, uh, so let's see here, uh, this is a limit, uh, H going to zero, factor out H. So here's my H, H times H, that will be my H square. And then uh, H times two X, that will be my two H X and then uh, times plus two, uh, h times two, that would be my two h, right? Uh, over this, you know, this x plus h plus one square, x plus one square. 
times this one over h. All right. So you see, once you factor out h, there is an h. Uh, so this h here cancel out with, with this h. All right. Um, and uh, so now, if you replace h by zero. So now if you replace, so this is equal to, uh, now we're gonna replace h by zero. So in the top, we're gonna have zero plus, uh, you know, plus two x plus two times one over uh, x uh, plus zero plus one square times x plus one square. All right, so that will be 2x plus 2 over x plus 1 square times x plus 1 square. All right, so that will be in the top, you can uh, factor out 2. So that's 2 times x plus 1 over x plus 1 square times x plus 1 square. It's the same uh, base, right? So that will be x plus 1 to the power 4, right? You add the powers. Right, two plus two, that will be four. Now there is an x plus one in the top and x plus one to the four in the in the denominator. You know this is power one. This is supposed to be power one. So if you take the difference uh, between the powers, four minus one, that will be three. Right. So the answer would be two over x plus one, four minus one, that will be cubed. So that's two over x plus one cubed. So yeah, so that would be a final answer. Uh, so your F second. So then your final answer. I got answer, it now. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah, uh, no problem. So your F second of X, it's actually two over X plus one Q. But anyway, I mean, this is a good exercise. So we can see guys, this is, I mean, applying this limit uh, to compute the derivative, sometimes it's very, it's very, very long, and it's kind of, sometimes it's really hard. I mean, it's not, it's not obvious, right? So that's why, you know, we had all these formulas, uh, you know, um, in the section two point three, you know, uh, to compute the derivative instead of using the limit, you know, the limit and definition, of the definition limit of the uh, limit definition of the derivative, then uh, you, you can use a uh, our formulas to compute the, the derivative, right? Because uh, it can, the computing the, the derivative using the limit is very, very hard sometimes. Anyway, so that's for the F uh, second of X guys. Um, actually, I mean, we did most of the problems, I think, right? Uh, there's almost nothing left. Yeah, we did. <laughs> um, well, uh, probably, uh, I don't know, probably the limits uh, in the first, in the, in the limits in the first problem in the page, uh, okay, we did page one, uh, page two, uh, I think, yeah, I mean, we can do the, I don't know if you have any trouble with uh, computing the limit with the square root or uh, there's also the sign. Um, uh, yeah, probably I can uh, say a couple of words about the, the limit with the square root. Uh, so that'll be the, I guess, number, that'll be the number seven. So, um, okay, so this is a, so I'm gonna come back to the problem number one, to the limits. Uh, so this is problem number one. Um, so with the square root, right? This is, so just to remind you how to do this. I mean, you have this limit, you know, X going to zero, you have square root of, uh, you know, nine plus X and then minus three, the whole thing over X, right? Uh, so just to remind you how to do such a problem. So this is a problem seven, I think this is seven. Uh, I mean, the limit number seven. A second, a second page. Uh, anyway, so of course, if you uh, if you say my the x is zero, uh, if you say x is zero, then uh, you know you have a square root of nine um, plus zero. So that's square root of nine. You know you're gonna have square root of nine, and then minus three over zero. 
square root of nine, uh, of course, that will be three. Three times three is nine, right? So there'll be three minus three, that's zero over zero. And that will be n determinant four, right? So anyway, so when you have a square root and you have n determinant four, uh, so the idea guys is to multiply, don't forget. Uh, so the idea is to multiply by the conjugate. So uh, the idea here, to multiply by the conjugate. So what do I mean by the conjugate? So this is, you know, limit x going to zero, uh, square root of nine plus x minus three over x. And then this is minus three. So I'm gonna multiply by square root of nine plus x and then uh, plus three instead of minus three, All right? So it's plus three here over uh, square root of nine plus x, of course, over the same thing, right? Now, uh, why do we do this? Because, um, so that'll be like in the top, it would be like uh, a minus b. Uh, this is like, um, this is like a minus b times, you know, a plus b and a minus b times a plus b, that will be a square minus uh, b square. Um, so this is the limit, x going to zero. So we're gonna have square root of nine plus x square. So that'll be my a square, this is my a square. And then minus, and then we're gonna have b square. So minus b is three, so that's minus three square over, of course, um, you know, x times, this is multiplication, right? So x times, uh, you know, square root of nine plus x and then plus three, All right? Anyway, so once you have the square root, uh, square of the square root, so we get rid of the square root, right? So then we're gonna have a limit, x going to zero. Uh, so square root cancel out with the square. So there'll be nine plus x minus, and then three square, that would be nine over x times square root of nine plus x plus three, All right? Now in the top, we have nine minus nine, that would be zero, All right? And then we're gonna have x, so let me write it again. Um, so we're gonna have a limit x going to zero, so we're gonna have x over x times the square root of nine plus x plus three. So this x over x here cancel out, but in the top, you're still lef left with one because it's x times one, right? So now if you replace x by zero, let's replace x by zero. So you're gonna have you know, one in the top and then uh, square root of nine uh, plus zero and then plus three, all right? So it's, Square root of nine is three, so that will be one over. That will be one over three plus three, so this is one over three plus three, so that's one over six. All right. So I mean, this is just to remind you: if you have this limit with the square root, this is how we uh, solve uh, such a, a limit, right? Anyway, uh, is there any question, guys? Any other? Any other, I think we did uh, most of the, I mean, I think we did the whole review sheet, right? I mean, uh, I think there's nothing left. Uh, we did two, three. Yeah, I think we did everything, right? Um, almost everything. Um, is there any question, guys? Any requests? Any? No, I don't have no questions, no? Professor. Okay. Um, anyone else? Okay, so I guess, yeah, so if, uh, yeah, we did the whole review, almost the whole review sheet, so probably, um, I guess I can stop here, and actually we didn't take a break, I'm, uh, I'm sorry about that, guys, I forgot to take a break, but um, um, uh, yeah, so probably I'm gonna, probably gonna stop here, um, so I'm, I'm gonna upload the, the, the recording later, uh, uh, tonight uh, on YouTube, uh, and I will send you the link, all right? Um, yeah, so is there any question, guys? 
So no, thank you, Professor. Okay, well no. then, thank you. Okay, then um, I wish you good luck on uh, on Wednesday. Uh, again, the test is at six p.m. Uh, so we should expect the test to be on Blackboard at six p.m. All right, on Wednesday. And remember, guys, you have until nine fifteen to submit your answers. Uh, it's important that you submit your answers before 9.15 because uh, after 9.15, I won't accept your answers uh, uh, unless you have a valid uh, justification, okay? Uh, yeah, so yeah. So I wish you good luck on Wednesday. Um, uh, and of course, uh, stay safe and uh, take care, all right? Thank you, guys. Thank you, Professor. Same to you. you. Have a great night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you Wednesday. Take care. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.